Hey, what's up? This is Paul Solt from Super Easy Apps, and I wanted to talk to you about an article I came across yesterday when I was on Stack Overflow. So I asked the question, and then I was looking to see if anyone responded. No one responded yet, but I came across this gem, and I wanted to share it with you. So the question is, should you keep, or I guess it's not a question, you should keep a developer's journal is the title of this article. I'll have a link down below. And I think this one's really good. Um, I'm going to talk about my process in a, a few minutes, but I just wanted to sort of show you the process of like why you might want to consider this. And uh, let's go through that. So they're talking about a developer journal. They want to know like why, why even bother? Like why waste your time writing things down when you could just be working? Um, but let's let's see what they have to say. So. Number one, it's going to help you define what you're doing, and that helps you sort of ask questions to help you keep you on track. It reduces ambiguity. So a problem well stated is a problem half solved. So if you know how to state the thing, that can help you with your Google searches, but that can also help you think about the problem differently. That's really important. You're going to learn from experience. And it's how you can level up. It's how you can recall what you worked on. A lot of times at the end of the day, I don't remember what I worked on, but if I've written it down, then it's like, oh yeah, I did that. Yeah, I remember that. It can help you stay focused and not get sidetracked. Um, this is what I really liked about uh, John Carmack's dot plan files. It's just like very focused. He knew what he was doing um, and he could pull in tasks from previous plan files. So that's the same type of thing that we're doing here. And then you can get things out of your head um, so that you stop ruminating. One of the things, like if you ever have an idea that's always going on and on and on and on and on, one of the things to do to close that, we call that a loop, is to just write it down. It could be on a piece of paper. It could be in your to-do list. It could be in your, your dev journal, whatever you want to do. So how do you keep a developer's journal? Um, first thing is setting up your journal. So picking a place to write, and I'll talk about mine in a moment. Um, I just use Markdown. So I think that's a, a big win here and synchronize it somewhere. I used to put it on GitHub, uh, a private thing, but I just never push changes. So maybe I should do that again. Right now, I've just been using Dropbox or iCloud to store mine. And I just use Multi Markdown, which is this app down here at the bottom, um, which I like. It just doesn't work well for really large files. So I'll show you a trick that I have for that uh, in a moment. Um, so get into the right mindset. I just write anything that's on my mind. Like, I don't need a mindset. Um, you can always customize more. I don't do any customization other than I do use text expander. So, uh, this gives me really quick ways of writing links, which is super helpful. Like, I don't even know what I have here, but like, this is just a link to my YouTube studio channel, um, so that I can get access to it and, uh, just go right to it. So I'm not getting distracted by YouTube videos when I'm trying to upload. Um, that's super helpful. I use this all the time for uh, the date. So I'll use something like date. This is my favorite one. I don't know. I don't know why it's super simple. It's just a, a date formatted with a year dash month dash day. And I do this because it allows me to then create headings. Um, so that's super fun. So that's text expander. Um, I will say doing it before you start coding is, is pretty important. Uh, and I'll talk about that in a moment. I've got a task list that I use. Um, so I've got a structure, which is a little bit different from what this is talking about. While you code is a, another time when you want to be journaling. So this is, this is key. So write questions <clears throat> when you're stuck, um, or when you're frustrated. And then you can go back to them 
when you're figuring those things out. And that's super helpful because now you have a like a mini blog post for yourself that covers how to start and stop something. Um, and I already talked about this. It's like getting ideas and questions and to do's out of your head. Like asking questions is a really good way to re-engage your mind in different ways so that you can find the solution. Like asking a question leads you to solutions. If it's always in your head, you're never going to, to figure it out because you can't see it and a different part of your brain can't act on it. And then when you finish a task, this is really good. Um, so that's sort of closing the loop. It's the full circle like, okay, I had a question. I went through it. Oh, this is what I figured out. Now I finished it. Is there something else that um, you want to talk about? So um, this is actually really good for your work summaries. And this is something that I, I did when I was at GoPro is just to try and keep track of all the different things that I was finishing um, because there were so many different things. I would have a work summary and then I would sort of bubble up the more important things that had bigger impact uh, so that I could talk about that with my manager. Um, and then if I'm looking for another job, those are key points that I can talk about when I'm interviewing at different companies. So tips for success. You make journaling a habit. Um, I do like writing at the beginning of every day. It is so refreshing to just brain dump and get things out of my head. Um, but my journal is is not really... I don't have a habit for it. It's just, I just do it. I guess I have a habit, but I don't just write to write in my, my dev journal. It's like very action oriented. If I'm working on something, I'm, I'm probably logging something. Um, definitely not going for a word count. So be direct, be concise. Um, what else do we got here? All right, so what else are you going to learn from having like a dev journal? So this gives you an opportunity to, to find some time to like read your journal every month, every sprint, every quarter to sort of see what you've worked on. Like that's, that's fascinating. We can look at mine in a second. And that's helpful for your one-on-one -on -one meetings with your manager. It's helpful for your performance review process. It's helpful for team retros. Um, it's helpful to share like these blog posts that you can can take and turn into something to share with someone else. Um, that's exactly what they talk about here. A brag doc, which is kind of like my work summary so that you can do career advancement conversations with your management or another company. And um, a lot of times I sometimes refer to something that I wrote about because I know it's in my dev journal so I can search it. And that's where I have an archived sort of dev log uh, that is super helpful. All right, so this is that article. I wrote a, um, a comment down here and I just wanted to sort of go through that. Okay, I'm gonna have to interrupt. Um, I know I said I'd talk about this. I, I have the stuff above me so you can sort of look at um, what I'm doing, but this video is far too long, so I'm going to make it a little bit shorter for you and we'll talk more in depth about my dev journal structure. So to just sort of summarize, I've got a log.md, I've got an archive log.md, I've got a task list, I've got a work list, or sorry, a work summary, a blogs, and a bugs. And so some of this is on my work machine for whatever company I'm working for, and some of this is on my local machine, depends on what I'm doing. I'll talk more about that tomorrow. So if you want to learn more, click the like button and subscribe. And then tomorrow we'll go into the nuances of my own logging system so that you can get a sneak peek of like what my logs look like, how I'm formatting them, how I'm working with like text expander and tools like that. All right, I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.